Okay, again, we're presented with five questions. You make a decision which question's easiest. And I'm going to say one doesn't look bad if I understand the reading of it. So if I were to look at number one, the first thing I would understand is to show that if a, um, that if a differential function is even. Um, so that show that if a differential function is even. Let me write down what even means for a function. It means f of x equals f of minus x for all x in the domain of f. All right, so x in the domain of f. All right, then we'll say, show that, it's, well, it says differentiable. Let's write this down. f prime of x equals f prime of minus x times of the inside, which is minus 1. So what do I notice now? I know that f prime of x is equal to the opposite of f prime of minus x. All right? So what's say? It says, show that, that a differential function is even. Well, this is the definition of even. That its derivative is odd. Well, you know, this is the definition of odd. All right, we're done. I want to look at the k. Uh, over here it says if f is even, then f of x equals f minus x for all x in the domain of f. Using the chain rule, the derivative of f is f prime of x equals minus f prime of minus x. That is the definition of an odd function. All right, we did okay. That's in the blue area. Let me get my eraser out. And I'll erase this stuff over here. Again, it's written in the blue area for you. And now let's look at I don't know, suppose A and B are two different real numbers. Now well, let's try two. So A is not the same as B. That's what it says right from the get-go. It says the function, blah, 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 satisfies that F of A equals F of B. Well, let me write down F of A. F of A is A squared plus A squared plus b, so that would be 2a squared plus b, and f of b is going to be b squared plus ab plus b. All right, and they say they're equal. Let's write this down. So 2a squared plus b is the same thing as b squared plus ab plus b. Well, I see the B's disappearing. That's a good news. And then I get something a little strange, but I'm going to rewrite it. I can write it as B squared plus AB minus 2A squared equals 0. I'm hoping this is factorable, right? You get B and B. Let's see, if I use my finger numbers, 2a and a, and let's take a look at this. So it looks like this. Let me just see if that's true. b times b is b squared, and then um, you get 2ab minus ab. Yeah, looks great. So I get solutions to this problem right over here, right? What is the solution going to be? b equals a. That can't be, though, because they said this over here. This couldn't be an answer. The other answer is b equals minus 2a. Right, it's right over here. But again, this one makes no sense with the original wording of the problem. Now, what's our question? What's the value of f of 2? Wow, well, let's write that down. f of 2. Well, if we write that down, what's it going to be? 4 plus 2a plus b. Wow, I know what that is. It's right over here. So 2a plus b is equal to 0. By the way, this is also going to be 0, using the 0 product rule. So it's going to be 4. All right, let's look at the key. That's number 2. And number 2, I might have a little done a little differently, but they're still going to the result of 4. Again, they still did this part, but they did this a little bit differently, by the way. All right? That's fine now. And I, actually, they didn't do it differently. Yeah, they did. They plugged in a number. All right. 
Let me see if I did that right. F of 2, 2a two plus b. Yeah, they did a little differently. They, they made the substitution before going forward. But anyway, equivalent. All right, we still got the 4. Equivalent. My work looks a little different over here. And that happens sometimes. So, you know, the day I did that problem is different than the day I'm doing this problem over here. All right? But anyway, that's fine. All right, let's look at this one over here. And, and I always say something about this one over here. It does look really hard to do. It wants me to find the product AB. And let me look at that. And the first thing I would probably do is I probably would square both sides. And if I were to square both sides, I would get A squared equals 6 plus, well, this infinite root thing, which would be 6 plus, this is crazy looking, right? 6 plus 6 plus, you get the idea, yada, yada, yada. Well, what do I notice right now? I notice that a squared is actually just 6 plus a. All right? So I think I could probably do the second one also, right? Was that going to be b squared would equal 9 plus b? All right? I don't have to go through that, you know, that what I did up here to do that because it's very similar looking, right? So let me see if I can figure this out. And they want to know what AB is, right? So I'm going to write this down. And again, I don't know. It's A squared minus A minus 6 equals 0. And that looks fairly easy to do. And I'm, I'm trying to go back to something. It could be a dead end again. So this would be A and A and 0. And you would get 3 and 2 minus and a plus. So a could be minus 2 or a could be 3. Now, i got to be honest with you. Looking at this over here, I know a can't be a negative number. Again, looking at this, it's whatever that number is, there's no way it's negative. It's principal root. So I'm going to say over here, the only answer here could be this. So at least I know what A is, but I, don't, I still don't know what B is. But I'm hoping it's going to be equally as easy, but maybe not. All right, so what do you get? You get B squared minus B minus 9 equals 0. Now I'm looking at this, and I want to see if I can factor it. It doesn't look promising, though, does it? So it would be B and B, 0. Kind of looking at that, and you get know, like nine and one, three and three. I'm just not seeing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that's that's really not working out for me. So I'm going to use quadratic formula, and we'll see if I can figure it out. And so B is. Let's write this down. Using quadratic formula. And again, I hate to use this terminology, but the terminology I'm, I'm really looking at this thing coefficient. So it's really like a x squared, but it's not an x in a problem. It's b. And that's going to be minus big B, little b, minus 9 equals 0. All right? So when I, when I say A and B, I'm talking about the big A and B in the problem. And the C is minus 9. So I, I, that's a little confusing. I realize that. So let's see. Opposite of the B. So that would be 1 plus or minus the B squared, which is 1, minus 4. The A is 1. And the C is minus 9. I'm just going to put that in this way over here. And because I'm bottom twice the A, which would be 2. Get my eraser out, get rid of this baby stuff over here. And let me see if I can write that down now. So B could be 1 plus or minus. I'm going to 2 in the bottom. And what's that root going to be? 37, right? I hope you realize 37 is a lot bigger than 1. So the answer over here, B, again, has to be positive. And again, you, you may wonder why I know that. I'm looking at the principal root, and whatever that is, it's, it's, it's got to be bigger than um, than 0. It's got to be positive, right? So I think I know what B is now. So what's B going to be equal to? It's actually 1 plus the root 37 over 2. And what was their question? What's A times B? Well, A is 3, and B is this number over here. So, again, 
it's A times B is going to be 1 plus root, by the way, let me re remind you, B is greater than 0 and A is greater than 0. So it's 1 plus root 37 over 2. I'm doing A times B times 3, which can be 3 plus 3 root 37 over 2. That's a crazy looking number, huh? So let's take a look. And um, let's see if I did that okay. I, if I make a mistake, I'll have to correct myself. This is number 3, right? Yeah, right here. Let's see if I wrote that that right, though. Short memory, right? You know what? I made a mistake somewhere. I got to fess up to it. And, you know, what, what did I do wrong? I mean, someone says, what did you do wrong? I did something wrong somewhere. Now, either in my key or here, I did something wrong. I got to figure it out. And it, you know, because I wrote the key by the way, so maybe I maybe the key's wrong. So let's see, minus b minus nine. So no, I don't think I made a mistake here. Let's go over here and see where I made a mistake over here. Yeah, I made a mistake here, right here. That's a mistake. So I got to correct that. This needs to be corrected. You're not going to see this, by the way, but I'll correct it. And let me write that down in my notes. So I got to correct. Let me tell you what I got to correct over here. This happens sometimes. I got to correct number three in 5.31. Number three, I made a mistake in the answer, and the answer should be three plus three root 37 over two. All right, I got that written down. I'll take care of that later. All right, so I, I'm kind of running through the problems, and I got to do the next thing up. And let me see if I wrote that down, three plus three root 37 over two. Let me just erase my work over here. I need room. It's like you know, your teacher at the whiteboard or blackboard. They're always erasing, right? One thing nice about video, you can always go back and look at it. So let's take a look. I'm going to go to number four. Number four says, how many integers satisfy that? You know, I'm not going to think about that. I'm going to just see if I can solve the inequality. And that would be N4 plus 6n minus 6n cubed. I'm, I'm doing what most teachers would tell you to do for an inequality that's nonlinear, is to get it compared to 0. And I'm looking at that, and I'm going to try to do something over here. I'm going to get it in a better order for me, n4 minus 6n cubed minus n squared plus 6n less than 0. I'm going to try to factor it. That's n cubed. That would be n minus 6 minus n, and that would be n minus 6. Well, things are working out pretty nice right now, aren't they? And you get n minus 6 and you get an n, their factor is common to those two terms. And then what would you left off with? You'd be left off with n squared minus 1. I've got to keep moving along in this one. n, n minus 6, n plus 1, n minus 1, less than 0. So I'm going to put my number line down, just doing a nonlinear quality technique. I'll write down all the zeros. We'll get to the question later, by the way. N could be 0, N could be 6, right? That's where the change in signs way, and then plus or minus 1. What I need to do now is I need to take test points, and I'm going to write the test points down for you. Over here, a good test point would be 7. Here, a good test point would be, I don't know, like 2. 
Over here, a good test point would be like a half. Over here, a good test point would be like a minus a half. And over here, a good test point would be like minus two. You're gonna plug it in. Let's do seven first. First factor is positive, positive. I'm just doing a factor analysis now, positive, positive. Everything's positive, by the way. So that means it doesn't satisfy the inequality. It's not less than zero. Let's do two. What do you get? Positive, negative, positive, positive. Well, everything here is negative. And that certainly satisfies the inequality. All right? By the way, I'm not shading in the integer one or six because that doesn't make it equal to, that makes it equal to zero, which is not less than zero. Put a half in there, what do you get? And you get positive, negative, positive, negative, which is positive overall. Certainly doesn't sound, minus one half, but when you plug that in, what do you get? Negative, negative, positive, negative. And that would give you, let's see, negative, right? That doesn't, that satisfies it. No, it does. That satisfies it here. And you put minus 2, what would you get? Negative, 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 and a negative. And that's positive overall. And that's certainly not less than 0. So th this would, if you put intervals down, I'm not saying that was our question, the intervals would be minus 1 to 0. Uh, that's union 1 to 6. And that, that's what you do if this were... Um, a real number problem, but they say integers. How many integers satisfy this? Well, let's count them up. How many integers are there? There's none here. There are no integers between minus 1 and 0. What are the integers over here? 2 would be an integer that satisfies that. That's in that interval. 3 would satisfy that. 4 would satisfy that. And 5 would satisfy it. So there's only 4 integers. So the answer is 4. And the 4 integers are 2... 3, 4, and 5. All right, let's look at our answer. I'm saying 4. Yep, I said 4, and I did say 2, 3, 4, and 5 are the only integers that work. All right, let's go to the last question. And let me get my eraser out. Again, this was a rather easy set of problems, I believe. But again, your mileage may vary. They're easy on a certain day, but on another day, they might be really difficult things. You don't understand what you're being asked. Happens to me too. Like when I look at problems, some days I'm better than others doing problems. And don't be discouraged, all right? So it says you know that f of x is a quadratic polynomial. So I'm going to write that down for you. So f of x is a quadratic polynomial, ax squared plus bx plus c. They did say that, all right? Then it says f of 2 equals 8. I'll write this down. f of 2, well, that would be 4a plus 2b plus c is equal to 8. And they said f of 3, let's be very careful here, is 15. That means 9a plus 3b plus c is equal to 15. And they say f of 4 is equal to 26. That's 16a plus 4b plus c equals 26. Well, there, there's certainly many ways of doing this. I'm going to say they're probably the easiest way is what you recognize, at least initially. And what I recognize is a system of linear equations. And the linear equations are as follows. This one, this one, and this one. And I'm going to do it by matrix. I'll put this down for you. 4, 9, 16, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 1. I'm using an augmented matrix, and this would be 8, 15, 26. All right? So I'll write down what I'm going to do. I'm going to do row 1 times minus 1. I'm going to add it to row 2 and give it to row 2. I'm going to do minus 1 row 1, add it to row 3, and give it to row three. Well, let me write that down for you, and I'll try. I'll try to be somewhat neat doing it. So four, two, one, eight. Well, let's see. Minus four plus nine is five. Uh, minus two plus three is one. Minus one plus one is zero. That's the whole reason we're doing it, by the way. Minus eight plus fifteen is seven. And let's see. Minus four and sixteen is twelve. 
then you get minus 2 plus 4 is 2. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. Minus 8 plus 26 is 18. All right, so I'm getting close. And what do you mean by close? I'm, uh, you know, I did this first, then I did this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do minus 2 row 2, add it to row 3, and give it to row 3. Let's write that down for you. So you get 4, 2, 1, 8, 5, 1, 0, 7. A little more complicated. So minus 2 times 5 is minus 10, plus 12 is 2. Uh, minus 2 times 1 is minus 2, plus 2 is 0. And then, you know, whatever I do with the zeros are going to be zeros. Then you're going to get minus 14 and 18, which is 4. So I got something over here. And, and let's not forget, this is A, this is B, this is C. So I get 2A is equal to 4, which says A is equal to 2. So I just did this row. Now I'm going to do this row. And what does it say? It says 5A plus B is equal to 7. Well, I'm pretty sure A is 2, so that means 10 plus B is equal to 7. And that looks pretty easy to me. I'm going to say B now is minus 3. Now I'm going to go to the next row, this row up here. I'm going backwards. It's called back substitution. What do you get? You're going to get 4. Whoops, sorry about that. You're going to get 4A plus 2B plus C is equal to 8. Now, I, I believe A is 2, so this would be 8. I believe B is minus 3, so minus 6. And I believe C is something, right? And what would that have to be? C would have to be 6. So what was your question? If you know, oh, what are the sum of the coefficients? Well, let's write this down. Well, the sum of the coefficients, right? Let's, what, what's A? What I find A to be? A is 2. 2x two squared minus 3x, because b was minus 3, right? And c was 6. What are the coefficients? Let me point out what this means. This is a coefficient, that's a coefficient, and that's a coefficient. So some of the coefficients is going to be 2 minus 3 plus 6, which is 5. Let's see how we did. Oops, going too far there, aren't I? Yeah, right over here. And I got those numbers over here. Okay, so that's not so bad. So I'm going to say, you know, the, for the most part, and again, once you go back over, you know, kind of, you know, doing this, I think for a lot of students, the, the tough question or the toughest question was this one over here. And a bad way to start that is, you know, maybe multiplying them together. It looks like a nightmare if you multiply it together. It really does. All right. But, you know, go back to, you know, some basic stuff that you were told in, in your basic algebra classes. You know, square both sides, get rid of the root. You're never going to get rid of the root, though, but you see a pattern when you do that. And the pattern should be obvious. So that was the worst one. This one also over here I want to point out for a lot of students is also really difficult. They don't, they don't know even where to start in the problem. Look back at definitions. Do you know what even? Do you know what odd is? All right, that would be nice if you knew that. All right? You know the definition of even and odd. All right? Let me point out what I mean by that. You know, even functions f of x equals f of minus x for all x in the domain of f. And odd functions f of x equals minus f of minus x for all uh, x in the domain of the function. All right? So we did that one. The easy problems, I want to point out the easy ones. I'm going to say 2 is easy and 5 is easy. A lot of times people misunderstand number 4, but go back to the familiar. And sometimes the familiar, just what you do is replace the n by x and solve it. You may want to try that technique, too. And it should remind you when you do that. Don't think about integers at first, by the way. Just just think about what you did in your pre-calculus classes, and you'll get that. Okay, again, th there's questions. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. My email address is Bannon, B as in boy, the at symbol, N-N-O-N dot U-S. And again, there's always the issue, like, if these become really popular, which is super unlikely. I can't answer, like, if if, I, if more than, like, you know, I get 10 or 20 emails a week, I just can't handle it, all right? I'm, I'm working, and I, I do a lot of work, and I just really can't handle all that email. It's overwhelming at times. But, um, you know, 
give it a shot if you want to reach out to me. And uh, please do. Thank you.